I don't do well with confrontation, you guys know that. I immediately, boop, my brain pulls a ripcord. I have zero memory of that event. Did you know at least 50% of people report having at least one dissociative episode in their life? Yet it's not something that we talk about that often or even understand, which is why today I want to answer this question about dissociation and its causes. If you're new here, my name is Katie Morton and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. And today we're gonna to answer a question that I received online. Katie, I have a question about dissociation. Does it have to be caused by trauma or are there other things that can cause dissociation? I thought this was a great question because we often think of dissociation as a response to trauma. Now, if you don't know what dissociation is, let me explain. When our nervous system becomes overwhelmed, right, with what's happening in our life, and I said overwhelmed because everyone is going to be different, right? Everyone's ability to weather life storms is gonna be different depending on how much sleep we got, how many coping skills we have, what our support system is like. All of those things are gonna weigh in in our ability to ride out what is happening to us or around us, okay? So when we become overwhelmed, meaning what's happening to us is too much for us to manage, our brain oftentimes pulls the ripcord on reality. Wah! Meaning it pulls us out of self and or environment. We call that depersonalization being removed from self or derealization being removed from environment. This experience can feel like watching yourself like you're on TV or in a movie. It can feel like you're in a fog. It's like hazy. Or you can feel like you're like watching yourself do things just slightly out of body, almost like you don't have any control over what you say and do. Now, all of that experience is what we like to call dissociation. Now that overwhelm that I talked about is often connected directly to trauma. And that makes sense, right? Because trauma in and of itself is that overwhelm. It means what happened to us was too much for us to manage in the moment. We feared for our own life and safety or the life and safety of someone else that we see or care about and we're traumatized, right? So can something else other than trauma cause dissociation? And the short answer is yes. Now, I like to think of dissociation on a spectrum, starting off with what I call the space out. Have you ever left from a really stressful interview or work presentation or just had a really, really long day and you don't remember how you got home? I think of that as like the lowest level of dissociation. We're not really present. We're removed from self. We don't have any memory of it, which is usually an indicator that some dissociation has happened. What that's called is a dissociative fugue, which is a part of what I talked about earlier, the DPDR, the depersonalization or derealization, okay? I wanna make sure we're following because I know this can be a lot to take in. So that low level, when we don't have any memory, I think is always a little red flag where we think, hmm, maybe I was removed from myself. I don't remember how I got home. And this also should, cannot be induced by drugs or alcohol, okay? I just like spaced out and made my way home. We also find a lot of people when we feel overwhelmed by our life, let's say things are stressful at home or at work and we daydream a lot. Like we create almost like an alternate reality of our life of what we wish would happen. It's not just daydreaming where we're like, oh, it'd be nice to be on a beach right now. That would be really relaxing. It's more like, Imagine if I had a different life and my life looked like this and it's like we play it out. We even create whole personas for ourselves and other people in this daydream. That's what's known as maladaptive daydreaming. And I believe, again, we're going on the spectrum, right? We have kind of the space out, then we have maladaptive daydreaming. And all of this is part of dissociation. And I would argue the, the other end of the spectrum is what we call DID or dissociative identity disorder, which used to be called multiple personality disorder. I have videos about that if you wanna learn more, but I just want you to think of dissociation on a spectrum because I think that better helps us answer this question. So if we are traumatized, it's overwhelming. That can cause dissociation. Our brain's gonna pull the ripcord on reality because it's too much for us to tolerate. And our whole goal of our person, like our nervous system, our body, is to survive and get through. So 
in order for us not to be even more traumatized or more overwhelmed, our brain's going to pull the ripcord. We can feel out of body, out of environment until it feels better to come back. Now that can take minutes, that can take hours, that can take days. Some people that can take weeks and months. Everyone's experience is different. However, that same overwhelm can be attributed to non-traumatic things. Now, remember, trauma is when we fear for safety or life of ourselves or someone else. That means that the overwhelm could be, I had a really, really intense work meeting and I'm afraid I might get fired. Super stressful, right? I can dissociate. I can get into an argument with a loved one and I can dissociate. There are a lot of reasons that our brain will pull the ripcord, essentially because the goal of dissociation, it's honestly adaptive coping skill because we don't know what else to do, right? The, the situation we're placed in feels like too much for us to manage. What are our options? I don't know, Wah, right? We pull out. And so anything that feels overwhelming to us where we don't feel like we have the resilience or the what they call the window of tolerance right what we can't weather our brain can remove us so that we don't have to maybe witness anything more stressful it feels too overwhelming our system doesn't get even more overcharged so that we don't become traumatized like i said it's an adaptive coping skill to help us get through without it getting worse okay and so that whole goal is just really protection. It's almost like our brain is going, la, 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 la. I don't hear it, I don't see it, I don't, I don't wanna be part of it. And that's also why we often don't have memory of it. Does that make sense? I hope so. And so the short answer to this question is yes. Other things that aren't trauma can lead to dissociation. Although I would argue that the most common cause of persistent dissociation is some sort of trauma. And persistent meaning it's happening throughout your life, like with, with some consistency. Like I said, for some people, they feel like they're in a dissociative episode for weeks, maybe months. That's most often caused by trauma. But for everybody in the world, they estimate that at least 50% of people have experienced at least one dissociative episode, it's not always caused by trauma. I can even personally tell you an experience that I had when I was in my early 20s that I know I dissociated because I legitimately don't have any memory of the event, but it was so incredibly stressful. I had gone to an event with a couple of friends of mine and one friend got upset because she wasn't part of what we were doing, even though we asked her to, she got mad because she felt like we ditched her at this portion of the event because she wanted to drink and we didn't want to, okay? It's not really important, but just to set it up. We come back to the hotel where we're all staying at the end of the night and she proceeds to pick a fight with me and another friend. Now, it was the name calling and the shouting. I don't do well with confrontation, you guys know that. I honestly, immediately, my brain pulls a ripcord. I have zero memory of that event until probably the next morning when we went to Denny's to get breakfast. But that was so stressful for me that my brain just was like, you know what, we can't really be present for this. We have to kind of take, whoop, take a break. And so notice if you have experience, if you're wondering, hey, have I ever had a dissociative episode? Do you have any portions of your life where all of a sudden it's stressful and then boop, you don't have any memory, that's an indicator. Um, if you often feel spaced out and like it's hard for you to bring yourself back, that's another indicator. If you struggle to like experience things, you can't feel your body sometimes, that can be another indicator. Those are all things that I would look for, kind of look for the disconnect. And the, the could be disconnection from, you know, our bodies, our brains, the memory, right? All of that is just a good indicator that that is happening. But overall know that most people, I believe, have experienced at least one episode of dissociation and those of us with difficult pasts or presence could experience them more frequently and be more aware that that's what's going on. But I hope that kind of helps you better understand what dissociation is, what the spectrum of it is. And I have tons of videos on my channel to further explain that if you want more detail. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next time.